Amen. So we pray. One more time, Heavenly Father, we pray that your grace may be sufficient for us and that, Lord, you will do for me and the audience what we can't do for ourselves. When we come to the end of this devotion, glory and honor be to you in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, um, last time we were dealing with how we came into existence and we ended where we were saying that we have a sure destiny. And so I want to pick it from there. And let me now share my screen. We said we have a sure destiny. And that destiny was promised by Jesus in John 14, one to three. I'll come again and take you to the place where I am so that we will be together forever. And so this morning, I want to share with you under the title, how many more years? How many more years? My dear brothers and sisters, we are faced with this question today. How many more years? There is a song how, uh, that has the words, a few more years shall roll. Those of us with uh, talent of singing may have sung the song. Some of us who do not know how to sing, uh, but we just uh, praise God uh, with the way we sing that we cannot sing before audiences because people, hey, it will be a challenge. Like the words of the song, written by Horatius Bonner in 1842. The first stanza has these words, a few more years shall roll, a few more seasons come, and we shall be with those that rest asleep within the tomb. Then, oh my Lord, Prepare my soul for that great day. Another stanza says, a few more storms shall beat on this wild rocky shore, and we shall be where tempests cease, and the sages swell no more. Then, oh, my Lord, prepare my soul for that calm day. A few more years shall roll. But the, the question we have, when will the few years be few? Because if the song was composed in 1842, how many years have rolled already? When will the few years be few so that we are, are on that show that is calm? A few more years shall roll and yet, Year after year, they come and go, and Jesus is yet to come. My dear brothers and sisters, we are finishing in this world. We are finishing in this world. Finishing because, according to the World Health Organization, Every year, heart diseases kill about 6.8 million people. And a stroke kills 5.5 million. Chronic obstruction of pulmonary diseases kill 3 million. And the lower respiratory infections kill 2.6 million. Neonatal conditions kill 2 million every year and so we are finishing we are a dying generation and yet the song writer says a few more years shall roll and everything will be over but how many more years 
will we experience on this planet Earth with such death? Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, include to the list of those who are dying from diseases like this pandemic. And those who are dying in road traffic accidents, those who are dying from violent related crimes, those who are dying from hunger, we are a dying generation. It is just a miracle that you and I are alive today. We should have been one of those who have already died and we should have been one in those statistics that we, are, we have shared already. We are a dying generation and we are a suffering generation. How many more years? Why has the Lord Jesus Christ delayed to come? Because over 2000 years ago, he promised, I will come again and I'll take you to where I am so that we may live together. But Lord, how many more years? Why the delay? Jesus himself said in Matthew 24, uh, verse 14, I like uh, the contemporary English version, and that is the one I am quoting from even today. When the good news about the kingdom has been preached to all over the world and told to all nations, the end will come. When the good news about the kingdom has been preached to all the world, all over the world and told to all nations, the end will come. And so my dear brothers and sisters, we are still on this other side of eternity because the good news of the kingdom has not been preached all over the world. The good news of the kingdom has not yet been told to all nations. We are still dying because the good news has not reached everyone. We are still here on earth suffering all kinds of sufferings because the good news has not gone all over the world. That is why a few more years have to roll before Jesus comes again. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, we are told that the people in the 1040 wind, the majority of them have not yet been reached. India has 90% people groups who have not yet been reached. Pakistan has 98% of people groups who have not yet been reached with the message of salvation. China has 81% of people groups not yet uh, reached with the message of God. Bangladesh has 90% people groups who have not yet heard about Jesus. And in Nepal has 96% people groups who have not yet been reached with the people groups. This is according uh, to the Joshua Project. And the Joshua Project is a research initiative that seeks, uh, seeks to highlight ethnic people groups who have not yet been reached. My dear brothers and sisters, with such statistics, we can see why a few more years are yet to roll before Jesus comes to claim us his own. With these statistics, my dear brothers and sisters, we are still to die from pulmonary diseases. With these statistics, we are still to die from COVID-19 related complications. With these statistics, we are still going to die from stroke. With these statistics, we are still to die from all manner of diseases because the gospel of the kingdom has not reached everyone yet. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus died for those people groups that we have highlighted. And while we are talking about people groups far away, there are still many people around us who do not know what we know. 
There are still people groups around us, individuals in our communities who do not have the light that we have, who do not understand things the way we do. The fact that the majority of God's people are worshiped uh, on the day that he didn't uh, make or intend to be, war, to, be war, to be worshipped on is already an indicator that there is still a lot to be done before Jesus Christ comes. He died for the people of Bangladesh. He died for the people of Pakistan. He died for people of Nepal. He died for the people of China. He died for the people of India. The same way he died for you and for me. And so my dear brothers and sisters, it is time for Africa. This is Africa's time to reciprocate the generosity which was shown to her when she was still in darkness. Because remember, a few years ago, Africa was deemed a dark continent. Dark because our people did not know about Africa. Dark because we didn't have the light of the word of God. And while we were still in darkness, people from around the world, those who had received the good news of the kingdom, those who had received the light of the word of God, they gave generously so that Africa, a dark continent, can be enlightened. And so it's Africa's time to reciprocate the generosity shown to her when she was still wallowing in darkness. It is Africa's time to pay back for the sacrifices of early missionaries. It is Africa's time to reach people groups who are not yet reached. It is Africa's time, my dear brothers and sisters, to return tithes and offerings so that those who are still in darkness may come to the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Yes, brothers and sisters, it is Africa's time to reach the, the people groups who are still unreached. Those people groups, my dear brothers and sisters, they are hanging their hopes on you and me. Will you fail them? They are hanging their hopes on me and you that we will respond positively to the voice of Jesus to support the gospel expansion through our means. Will we fail them? Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, it is time to go home, but we cannot until all people groups have been reached with the gospel of salvation. We have been here on earth far too long. It is time to go home. We have seen it all. It is time to go home. We have suffered and died. It is enough and it is time to go home. But we cannot go home as long as there are still people groups who have not yet been reached with the gospel of salvation. How many more years shall roll? My dear brothers and sisters, I challenge you on this platform today to do that which is within your power according to the blessings God has given to you to hasten the coming of Jesus. I challenge you, my dear brothers and sisters, by the mercies and grace of God, not to fail somebody in Nepal, not to fail somebody in Bangladesh, not to fail somebody who is hanging their hopes on you and me, that you and I will return tithes and offerings so that the message can reach them and they, like us, can be ready to receive Jesus Christ as he comes again to claim his own, those he died for. How many more years? God bless you. Amen.